The Chumi Valley provides a number of interesting case studies to consider the future of land reform. One of these case studies is the land currently leased to timber companies in Hogsback. Here, the timber industry provides opportunities for small sawmilling companies. The timber industry is lucrative, harvesting wood pulp for paper, wood for furniture, tools and fuel. Cesric Timber is one of these small milling companies operating and harvesting timber in the region. So um, what we do in our company, we basically have our own harvesting operations where we have teams that go into the, to the forest, harvest the trees from a standing uh, point, pack it onto depot, move that timber with our trucks down to the firm, and from that point it will come into the machines here where we um, process that into a timber product that can be used by the people. When we started four years ago, we initially employed, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was about 15 people from the community. Um, today, four years later, we got staff of 52. Although the timber industry has many benefits, this is done at the cost of indigenous forests. The pine trees are spreading into and destroying grasslands. Indigenous trees are removed randomly by cutting and using poison without planting more. <laughs> To prevent the fires from spreading, one needs to create a fire break. It is a cleared barrier next to a plantation to prevent a wildfire, created by burning grass and clearing vegetation and topsoil. The disadvantage of this is that natural grasslands are destroyed, leaving the soil exposed. Okay, what we're looking at here is um, clearing by the forestry um, people I think to produce a fire break and this means that there's nothing to burn. To my mind it's an illegal process because you're not supposed under the um, Conservation of Agriculture and Resources Act, you're not supposed to cultivate or plant anything that's over 20% a slope. This steep fire break was created by removing all the vegetation that held the soil. Now, because of soil erosion, the slope can no longer hold water to feed the river below. Because you've cleared such a steep slope, you're going to get soil washing off it whenever it rains. So the soil will wash off and it will come into the river. And you're going to get a build-up of silt in the river and that has a lot of negative impacts on both the quality of the water for downstream water users because they'll be dealing with muddy water. Um, if there's a dam downstream, the silt will collect in the dam. While the company invests a lot of effort to prevent the timber from catching fire, it seems this care does not extend to the residential neighbourhoods. Bridget, a local resident, nearly lost her house because of a wildfire that spread as a result of burning timber debris. The fire was reignited by a strong wind, leaving the surrounding area a smoke den. So they, they literally come in and they take what they want. For me, it's like lake and pillage. <laughs> but they, they literally take the prime bits of timber and the rest is just left. And then they leave it for a while and then a few months later they come and they burn. And then the next thing, this massive typhoon, 
hurricane wind just came from the bottom up and it literally picked up the flame and it took them and tossed them through the sky like this massive fireball. I don't know, the gods were looking after us that day, but the smoke um, and it was this heavy ash that the whole place was just covered with this thick, thick ash. I mean, even inside the house with the windows closed and everything, it was, you couldn't see yourself from one side of the room to the other. It was so thick. It was very frightening. Apart from negligence managing fires, another problem is that the pine trees the forest companies plant spread rapidly and destroy indigenous vegetation, particularly grasslands. Indigenous plants are more resistant to fires, so their absence drastically increases the risk. The Wolf River catchment has lost many of its indigenous vegetation, a tragedy as only 0.8% of South Africa is indigenous forests. We are at the catchment of Wolf River, uh, the bigger catchment, and this is one of the tributaries feeding into Wolf River. And it is, it is a degraded grassland that is being taken over by wattle, but especially pine. Legislation needs to become a lot stronger, a lot stricter, in terms of ensuring that the, the, the pine companies, those forest companies that are growing the pines in the nearby catchments, are very much responsible for preventing their spread. If we lose the indigenous forest, we also lose the Cape Parrot. The Amatole Mountains is home to this bird because it relies on the fruit from the yellowwood tree that is also found in this forest. It attracts tourists who come to this area for its natural beauty and bird life. Because the yellowwood tree is being replaced by exotic pine forests, these parrots are at threat of becoming extinct. In the town of Hogsback, there are no low-income housing areas as the forestry industry has blocked this. As they say, the risk of fire is too great. Despite the economic benefits of the timber industry, it also has many problems. Is this not the time to reconsider what government should do with this land and explore other ways that the people can benefit from the land. Mm -hmm.